yeah, to, to have your services. Yeah. You know, just yeah. just to give you an excuse to come down here. I don't, I've never said what you do on the air, so I'm, I don't oh, okay. want to. Okay. I didn't want to do it without your permission. So that's okay. He delivers nuclear arsenals. I do nuclear warheads. He's a uh, what's it? Broken Arrow. It is a broken arrow. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, welcome into the show where we talk about the paranormal each and every Saturday night. So glad to be back at our regular time slot because that stuff, you know, it's, it's nice when you get to go on earlier like we had the last couple of weeks because you get out of here earlier and you get to bed earlier. But it just doesn't feel right talking about the paranormal at 7 o'clock at night. Now we can really get into it. We can really scare people before they go to bed. And uh, that's what we do here. And if you go to our website, SpookySouthCoast.com, or if you go to WBSM.com, you'll be able to see what we call Spooky TV. We actually broadcast video from the studio while we're doing the radio show. If that and <laughs> goes on while we're doing the program, you can see Moni picking his nose. And you can see Matt Costa messing around on Facebook when he's supposed to be doing the program. Yep. I'm just kidding. Twitter. It's Twitter. That computer couldn't handle running two things at once. And uh, we, so he we has have a hard time with one thing exactly. at once. Exactly. So we have we have this component of the show. And also on the Spooky TV page, SpookySouthCoast.com, you can jump into the chat room. And we always have uh, our different people in there chatting back and forth. And we were using a different program called Zat Chat. And there was just, there were some bugs with it. There were some issues with it. Hello. So we decided that we want to try a different format. So we're trying Pal Talk Express tonight. We're seeing how that works. And uh, let us know what you think. And uh, I think we're getting a uh, some complaints about the sound being out of sync. If you have any issues with your sound, you can always go to SpookySouthCoast.com and get the, or go to WBSM.com and get the WBSM audio directly. But uh, they're saying it's a little bit staticky on the audio. I'm going to just do one of these and jiggle the handle. Works at home on the toilet. jump in the chat room and discuss. And I'm so glad to see that so many of our spooky TV regulars have uh, made themselves Pal Talk screen names. And the cool thing about this is I can actually see the chat room now during the show. So if you have a question and you want to pose it in the chat room, we'll be able to see it. So that's uh, a good way of getting in touch with us. You can... time great horror it held up I, I wouldn't say it's you know exorcist exorcist quality but it was a, a, a pretty good film certainly the best of this recent trend of horror films yes I, I definitely a, a step above the rest of them that they've done uh, you know your paranormal activity and stuff like that it has a little bit of that flavor it's kind of like paranormal activity meets exorcist system at least in my opinion well, we'll take calls later on in the program uh, about the movie if you've seen it and you want to call in with your thoughts. Uh, also, I want to let everybody know, too, that on SpookySouthCoast.com, we are also we have our articles page up and running. If you click on the blog link at the top of SpookySouthCoast.com, you can get articles. We have fresh stuff, pretty 15, 16 articles posted up there now. We have a great slate of writers out there. Uh, who are going to be contributing. Uh, Dave Francis has already put up a couple of posts. Barb Wright has posted. Uh, Kira Emily has her first post up there now. Of course, Chris Balzano has been writing stuff, and he's also been putting up articles from the old SpookySouthCoast.com and getting those up there as well. <laughs> that will be contributing. And, of course, if you want to contribute, you still can. Just email us, SpookyCrew at SpookySouthCoast. We'll let you know how you can get involved with being a guest blogger on the site. 
and Moniz, of course, if you have anything that you want to contribute, uh, we can make you a login for it. And, and uh, Costa, you've already got one, so anything that you guys want to do, feel free to put that up there. And we're trying to make it so that you go to SpookySouthCoast.com every day and get the paranormal information that you need. So just our little service to the paranormal community. And speaking of service to the paranormal community, that's what tonight's topic is. We're going to be joined by, I want to say, all right, Laura Calhoun. And she's going to be talking with us uh, about the idea of paranormal talent agencies because there are paranormal investigators out there now who are hiring representation. There are people involved in this field who have agents. And Laura runs Resurrection Talent LLC, and she has a whole slate of clients, great clients, uh, who are involved with getting the word out there about themselves, and, and she helps them in that process. We've talked about this a lot here on the show. We've talked about whether or not there's a need for this. I'm of the opinion that if somebody can help you take something off your plate, then that's, that's a good thing. And that's something that I'm learning slowly how to do, <laughs> as we talked about right before the show came on the air. You know, Matt Costa is running Spooky TV. Chris Balzano is running the articles. I'm slowly learning that I don't have to have control of everything, and I can trust other people to do things. And I think that that's the great idea of having a talent agency like Resurrection Talent LLC. And, Laura, I'm guessing that that was kind of your intention behind starting the, uh, the company. Um, yeah, actually. Um, I got involved firstly um, with Dan Guthrie with uh, Haunted Entertainment. And um, I just felt like there was so much more that I could do. You know, other people, you know, when, you get, when you're involved with, with other people, you know, sometimes, you know, people don't think the same way. And I had a whole much larger scale that I wanted to go. So when I branched that off on my own, and uh, created Resurrection Talent. Um, it's been just, just an incredible ride, and I have the freedom to um, explore and create as much as I want to for my clients. Now, when you first decided to, to put this service out there and, and to, to take on clients, uh, were you confident of how you did them, or was it kind of a feeling up process with the first few clients of, you know, what exactly can be done for these people, or did you already have an action plan in place? A little bit of both, because um, when I worked with Haunted Entertainment, I was just an event coordinator, okay, and, but the thing is, I lived in Los Angeles for over 20 years, and I myself have been a model out here in my early years, I've actually done, I've been in, in actual major motion pictures, you know, nothing serious, but um, I know what it takes, or I had a good idea of what you needed to do as far as being an agent and getting yourself out there. So I took what knowledge I had implemented it into resurrection because, frankly, in my opinion, <clears throat> As hard as it is to get a client into an event, especially when they're not well known, this is out here versus in the paranormal community. Yeah, and, uh, and that's part of the the appeal, I guess, is uh, you know everybody wants to to kind of make it big. And that's why they head out to, to L.A. They want to have, you know, catch their break. Uh, but it's different with the paranormal community. You don't have to be out there to make your break. You, you can make a break for yourself pretty much anywhere uh, as long as it's probably more beneficial to be away from other people that are like-minded. You know, if you go up to Hollywood, you're competing with everybody else that wants to be an actor or everybody else that wants to be a screenwriter. But if you're in the paranormal community, if you are, you know, the big fish in the small pond, it probably benefits you better, right? You would think so. Um, you know, I work with several producers out here for um, some of my clients for upcoming Impossible TV shows that are going to be uh, coming out. And, you know, the big thing is what separates you from all the other teams or all the other paranormal investigators? And that's for, you know, because I try, when I bring on a client or a team, you know, before I even bring them in, you know, for me, and I only speak for myself and my company, I'm the same way. What makes you different from everybody else? 
Well, okay. and, I do not, and I refuse to sign just anyone. Well, that's that, that's definitely good to hear because I think there's other people who have tried to to follow your formula that aren't as uh, discerning about who their clients are, and so what you're getting is you're getting a bunch of you know pretty much carbon copies of each other. And one thing that I can say from looking at your clients is you definitely do have a variety of uh, subject matter that they can cover. You have a variety of talents that they have and a variety of approaches and perspectives. It's not like you're getting uh, one centralized vision from resurrection talent and these are just out that vision. You're getting people who run a broad spectrum. So uh, it's good to know that you are vetting these clients before you take them on. But... Have you been able? Have you had to tell people that you know I can't take you on as a client because I just don't see a market for you? Has that been something that's come up? Uh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely has. And you know, there's also been where I've had even people I know really well in this field, and they're like, you know, all now they want to come and be a part of Resurrection Talent, but let's just use uh, mm, psychics for an example mm -hmm. and at one point I had like three or four on my roster already and I had a friend of mine come up and, and ask me can I please you know sign with you and I'm like I have too many mm -hmm. as it is I asked you if you wanted to come on board because I saw something special in you before but right now I have no place for you because my situation for me is I am uh, you know in the beginning I was just a one woman army okay and I had to take care of everyone. I had to book to book everyone by myself, okay? And so I didn't want to sign on too many people because that would spread myself out too thin and people would get forgotten. You know what I mean? Right. And I, it's important to me to give all my clients equal attention in, in the business, you know? So... That's why you don't see, I mean, there's other, other agencies out there, they've got already like 150 people on their agency. Well, I'm sorry, but I guarantee you not everybody's getting the same attention to where I myself, including team members, okay, this is including team members, I've got a max of like 60 people. Okay, mm -hmm. and and now I have my resurrection social media army, which is just a few people that I've been able to bring on that love what I do and and love my concept and what I'm doing, and they go out there and they're they're pushing every client I have, so it helps me get everybody out there because the thing is, is you know, having an agent isn't for everyone because there's one thing I refuse to do, and all my clients know this, is I cannot. I cannot promise to have anybody book you. You know, I cannot force anyone to book my clients. Sure. Okay, and that's a misconception with a lot of people in the paranormal field. They think, oh, if I get an agent, they're going to book me at all these events. Sorry, <laughs> that's not the case, you know, because especially if you're not well-known, okay, if, you, if, if nobody knows who you are, and you expect that, you're nuts, okay? Because, you know, I can do what I can. I will push you just like I push anybody else because I don't take anybody that's non-exclusive, you know, because the people I found that it's the people who go non-exclusive, then they sign with you and with every other talent agency out there. And what happens is, is all of the talent agencies see that there's no loyalty coming from the clients, so they get put in the back of the bus. Mm hmm so then how, do, how does your fee service work? Then? Are you paid based on bookings that they get, or are you, uh, do you work on like a retainer that you're actively trying to seek bookings for them? Well, um, I get a percentage of if they get paid an appearance fee. Okay, so it's, it's not costing them anything if, if they don't get booked. No. Mm -mm. No. I do all the advertising. I pay for my website. I pay for everything I do, and I and I spend all of my own time taking care of the you know promotions all on my own dime. You know, I mean, this is not. I'm obviously I'm not doing this for the money. <laughs> right. Neither are the pe neither are the people who uh, you're representing. <laughs> you know, that's just unfortunately how it goes. Is it, it, it's a it's a uh, a limited opportunity market. So you, nobody's going to get rich off of it, but it's just it's a matter of being effective. And it, it's, yeah. it sounds like you've got it set up to be the, the most effective that you can be for them. 
Absolutely. And, you know, the thing is, is that, you know, like for myself, I, I create my own events. Like, for instance, I have um, the Resurrection Town of Presidente Dia de los Muertos at the Victoria's Black Swan in, in November. Okay? This is my event. We're the first to ever have an event, um, a, a paranormal conference at that location. And so what my goal and what I'm trying to do with my events is I plan, my goal is to have at least one event every month and a half to two months and all over the United States so that I can get all of my clients out there, okay? Mm -hmm. And people see them, people start to recognize them, people become interested. And that's another thing. I can't have people on my roster who can't speak. You know, and don't have anything interesting to say because no one wants to just see you sit there and, and look pretty. It doesn't right. work. Oh, trust me, if looking pretty was all it took, you know, this show wouldn't, wouldn't be on the air. <laughs> <laughs> we would have been canned a long time ago. on the air a long time ago. So, but when, when you do run into something like that, I mean, uh, uh, I guess we should probably take a step back here. And in the interest of full disclosure, Chris Balzano, who is the content director of Spooky South Coast, him and I used to run a, a company called Power Relations. And uh -huh. what we saw ourselves as is we weren't agents. We saw ourselves as being the PR arm for people. We helped them create press releases, and we helped them uh, – we, we coached them for media we interviews. Them market and themselves. To, to some degree. I mean, it, it fell on them to really uh, take advantage of what we had to offer, but we would offer these services to them. And I found that the biggest problem was is exactly what you're talking about. People wanted to have that representation, but there, was, there wasn't anything there yet. You know, they were kind of just forming the idea of what they want to be as a public personality. And I think what you're doing better fits that mold because you can mold them into being something that's effective in the market. Uh, but if you've got somebody where they just have nothing to offer and, and all they're doing is just regurgitating what they see on TV and they can't stand up and, and speak in front of the public, you're wasting your time and wasting their time trying to get them bookings. And that's absolutely correct. And, you know, and another thing is, is I just do not bring on people who are negative. Um, because, I mean, there's one thing about having a stigma about you. Like, for instance, I, and I love this guy to death, Mike Holman, okay, from Jackass. Everybody knows him in the paranormal field. And um, you either love him or you hate him, okay, mm -hmm. because he has a certain way about him, and he can come off crass or rude but he's just being funny and some people don't know how to come and how to how to take that you know for him in particular i can deal with that because this is this is his persona this is what he puts out there this is his career that's what he does okay but just people who constantly can't live life without being negative and creating drama i cut them out and, um, you know, for, and I don't want to say names, but we, you know, a little bit back, uh, we, you know, you know, there was an individual that was trying to expose fraud. He was very well known. He also was one of my, one of my clients and I cut him loose. I tried 20, 50 different ways to talk him down and it just didn't work. And I had to cut him loose. Well, I can't do it. That, that's the problem that I think is kind of unique in the paranormal field as opposed to some other fields is that uh, a lot of people, and this is going to be a really, really bad pun, considering what we talk about on this program and the fact that she runs Resurrection Talent LLC, but they dig their own graves. <laughs> I didn't want to have to say it, but really there's no other way of putting it. They do. <laughs> they, they cause problems for themselves. And yeah. you have to not only be an agent and a representative for them, but now you also have to kind of be their babysitter and their moral conscience. And that's, that's probably too much for you to take on for whatever percentage you get of their booking fees. Yeah. Well, you know, the thing is, is we're not talking about Hollywood and we're not um, talking about movies and uh, major network television shows as of yet. Some may be coming around the corner, which would be great, and I've definitely earned my keep to make that happen. But, um, you know, the, the number one priority for me is um, getting my talent out there. But when we come to a crossroad where we have someone that's creating negativity like that when you know, when that happened my number one thing was listen i have a whole slew of people on my roster that i have to protect mm -hmm. 
It's not a secret. You create drama for me and my company because you have something you want to say that 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 brings the back, backlash on me. You're out. You're gone. But, I but won't. at the same time, though, isn't there a dangerous line that you walk there in making sure that your own personal thoughts and beliefs don't get in the way of being able to represent them? Or will you just not represent them if they don't uh, go along with the way that you feel it should be? You know what? My, um, yeah, no. Uh, if they see, the way I, I have to put that one is, is most every, everyone that's on my roster, everybody that works with me, everybody has a good respect for, okay? And I don't bring on people that have a bad reputation. I won't do it, okay? Um, because I don't need the drama in my life. Well, understandable. And 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 so if they if they created and one of the things that in my contract that I have that my clients sign is there is an open end, thirty day out for both parties, myself and the client. If they don't want to be represented by my company any further. They just have to put it in writing and, and say this is my 30 days, and I have the right to do the same thing. No questions asked. Okay? Mm -hmm. I don't lock people in for years, months, whatever, because that's not fair. Right, and, it, and it's not fair to you because mm -hmm. uh, if you did lock them in, what if they lose their passion for it and, and they want to go into something else and, and they decide that it's not for them anymore? You know, you don't want to be stuck, you know, trying to find bookings for somebody whose heart isn't into it anymore. Exactly, exactly. So it just protects them, it protects me, and, you know, uh, so that if a bad situation like the one we just spoke of happens to arise, I have the, the open, the, 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 the ability to just cut the ties right there, Johnny, on the spot, because I just can't deal with that. I mean, it's just not good for my business. It's not good for my clients. Now, that in particular situation, anybody who is following that that knows what I'm talking about, it had created so much anger within the community. Well, you, you, don't, you don't want to say it, but we'll say it. I'm assuming that you're talking about Aaron Houdini and right. his decision and to take it upon himself to expose fakery in the paranormal. Right. Well, you know, as an individual, I've never had a problem with him whatsoever. Um, as far as that situation is concerned, um, I couldn't support it, and and uh, I, I believe that he understood it. He understood where I was coming from. Um, the bickering and arguing between him and my other clients that I hold near and dear and protect tooth and nail, which are the Booth brothers, um, I just I couldn't allow that, you know, and I had to protect them. Mm -hmm. You know, because they they do carry a humongous load of respect in the paranormal community. You know, and I had to do what I felt was right. You know. Oh, understandable. And and we had to go through the same thing in you know booking this program and, and putting guests on the air to deal with the topic. And okay. it, it's you you have to walk such a fine line that you it's you it's better to just walk away and to not have any involvement in it altogether, which is the way we eventually had to go. Right, and you know, it's it's not always about having to compete with anyone. And as a matter of fact, you know, when I first opened up Resurrection, I had um, mm -hmm. Mark Tetlow from my deal management, mm -hmm. Mike Roberts from Demented, and many other people step up. Keith Keith H, who is also one of one of my clients, step up and support me so wholeheartedly that we can work together. And I told him I said that's my goal because. When I was with the other company, they would have nothing to do with each other. So when I stepped away from that company and created Resurrection, they opened their, their arms and their professional life to me, and I am completely honored, you know. And I love working with these people when I have the opportunity, and I, and I get to talk to them whenever, you know. And, and it's such a great um, camaraderie, and that's what it's all about. Absolutely. Well, we have to take a break, uh, and we are talking with Laura. Did I say that right? Yes, that's La right. <laughs> Laura Calhoun of Resurrection Talent, LLC. And uh, if you have any questions or, or comments, 508-996-0500.
one eight seven seven nine nine six fourteen twenty if you want to call in toll free. But we are going to take a break. When we come back on the other side, I want to ask what happens when you have clients and how you find the best fit. All that and more coming up in just a few minutes here on Spooky South Coast. Don't look now, but Spooky South Coast is creeping up behind you right after this. Twitter user Casey Jackson tweeted, Oh, it's cool. It's not like I had plans or anything. Hashtag stupid car. Casey, we sense your sarcasm, but it's the Honda Summer Clearance event. Come check out the Civic. It's the best-selling small car in America, and it's loaded with standard features. But who wants a great deal on a great car? You, from what it sounds like. Well-qualified buyers can get 0.9% APR financing at the Honda Summer Clearance event, happening now. Based on Polk U.S. new retail registrations in the small car segment for January 2008 through March 2013. See dealer for financing details. This is an important important message for all hardworking Americans. Not long ago, Michael Parnas was living on a park bench in New York City. Fast forward to 2008, he took a few thousand dollars and in less than eight months, eight of the worst trading months in stock market history, Michael made close to four million dollars. He cracked the stock market's code and discovered the insider trends that your broker doesn't want you to know. So he is giving you his power trading, power living book and DVD to help take the mystery out of the market, break down the trades and trends you need to know and show you how he went from a park bench bench to Park Avenue for free. Just pay shipping. Michael has never stopped believing that regular hardworking people can make money in the stock market. A lot of money. In fact, Michael is convinced our trading can work for you too. That's why he's giving you his book and DVD for free. Call Michael now at 800-754-1058 and claim your free copy. Call 800-754-1058. That's 800-754-1058. Trading carries a high level of risk and may not be suitable for everyone. Some exclusions may apply. If you're an athlete of any kind and you know about joint pain, muscle pain, and even arthritis. Nearly half of all Americans suffer from some kind of pain due to chronic inflammation. Here's legendary golfer and Anatoblock ambassador, Fred Couples. This is Fred Couples for Anatoblock. It's been great for me and could be for you too. Anatoblock is a breakthrough supplement scientifically proven to quickly and effectively reduce inflammation and get rid of your pain fast. For me, Anatoblock has been phenomenal. I started taking Anatoblock and within a few days, I simply started feeling better. Anatoblock was an amazing find for me and I continue to feel better. Pick up your supply of Anatoblock today by visiting your local GNC store or going to GNC.com. Anatoblock is a GNC top selling product and five star rated. Even better, become a gold card member and get an instant 20% off. That's right, 20% off for becoming a gold card member. But hurry, this offer expires soon. So get Anatoblock today at a GNC store near you or GNC.com. Spooky TV there, and that's on point. And uh, if you have any questions about being represented and what it means, you know, don't call it up and be like, hey, you want to represent me? <laughs> that's probably not the best way to go. I'm sure you don't want to be taking calls from people who are looking for representation from that line. But uh, if you do if you do have any questions, though, or any thoughts or concerns, give us a call because, like I said, this is a topic that is, even though you don't want it to be, it's very controversial within the paranormal field. Because uh, as I'm sure you know, there's a backlash against people who feel that they need representation. Riley, are you still there? Yeah. Oh, oh I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. I, I'm sure that you must hear a, a backlash from people who feel like, you know, paranormal investigators should not be celebrities. I get that a lot. I hear that quite a bit, actually. Because what the the big thing is is they're like, you know, this is supposed to be a passion. It's not supposed to be about getting famous. Right, and, and unfortunately, though, that's what people are looking at it as. They're looking at it as an easy way to get famous because they look and they see these paranormal reality TV shows and they say, well, you know, these guys are just plumbers, you know, <laughs> or these guys are whoever, and they're really no more special than I am. I've been in this field longer than they've been in this field, and, you know, I feel like I can do the same things they have. I can go out and buy the same equipment, 
And so they feel like they should automatically be at that same level. And it just doesn't work that way. Some people have gotten breaks. Some people have been in the right place at the right time. And some people have put in work for a long time to get to where they are. And just because it looks easy doesn't mean that it is. Oh, it's absolutely not easy. I mean, bottom line, you know, and this is just me being honest, okay? But the thing is, is that what I do for my clients is I literally, I surf the, the Internet all day long, all day long, looking for new events, okay? Because that's what I have to do. And then I contact the people for the event to try and get them booked and stuff like that. And nine times out of ten, always, even when I'm trying to book my 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 VIP clients, you know, meaning like the Booth Brothers or Bill Bean or Keith H., either they don't have enough money or they don't have any more money because <laughs> they've already booked other big, big clients, you know, or, or you know, other um, um, talent. And um, so... Basically, what ends up happening is, especially for my clients who don't have a real huge name like my guys, they have to go and, um, you know, book a booth on their own, you know, and pay for it, you know, because I'm not going to pay for their booth. Sure, you know, right, that's yeah. what I do. <laughs> and so they have to continue getting themselves out there, like, to, like this weekend at the Ferrar School, there, you know, the Iowa Paracon. I have several of my people out there, you know, and... They're awesome people, and they're doing their thing, but, you know, I couldn't get them booked at that event, you know, except, obviously, Christopher and I, and Chris Dedman. They're booked at that event, and you know, but uh, they ran out, you know, pe- they just ran out of extra money, and the rest of the money has to go towards, you know, whatever else they do, you know? <laughs> Excuse me, they give themselves a budget, as you know, and there's nothing I can do about that. But, you know, I can't twist people's arms. I mean, I have my own sponsor, and um, I've always offered it when people say they ran out of money. I go, well, I could probably get you some sponsorship or my sponsor, get you some money, you know, and then you can bring on more of my people or bring on any of my people and help make your your, uh, your event even better. Some people are like, you know, they get afraid because they have to pay that money back probably, you know, depending on the deal that they work out. You know, and and they just don't know what to do. You know, it's it's not something that they're used to being offered. You know, it, and I guess it's hard for people to accept the fact too that they, uh, you know, that they're behind somebody else. That you know that if if there is an event taking place and they're looking for some of your talent to come and and fill in some of these slots, you know, they're going to have an order of preference of who they want. It's just the way that it goes, and it, and it works that way in booking shows. As you know, you know you have your own radio show, and mm-hmm. sometimes you, you know you say, well, okay, we have this person slotted in, but this person, we can bump them now. Uh, we have to bump them because we got somebody who is of a more urgent matter. I, I never really look at booking things as saying this person is more important than the other person. I, I would never say, you know, uh, just as an example, you know, I'd rather have Jason Haas on than Chris Balzano, but, although I would because I hear, have to hear Chris talk all the time. But, uh, you know, but I'm just saying, like, uh, you don't look at it that way, but you look at it as, gee, this is more of a, a pressing topic. And I'm sure that with a lot of these events that you're booking, they want the subject matter more than they want the person. And I think sometimes that's hard for people to, to swallow. You might be a relatively known name, but you're only out there promoting the same topic over and over again. Whereas somebody else can come in and offer a different slate. Like you look at somebody like uh, like John Tenney, for example, who you know never has to give the same lecture twice. Jeff Belanger, who could go out 365 days of the year and never give the same lecture twice. You know these people are the ones who are in more of a demand because they have more versatility. That's absolutely correct. That's that. And you know what I get a lot of, what I hear a lot of is people are tired tired, tired of going to these events because it's the same people every year, okay? And I hear, and, and I'm like, okay, well, you know, what? Then we need to get a different location and switch it up some. That's why when I do my own events, you know, if I have clients that are not in the immediate vicinity and they want to come to the event, then cool, but Wherever I have that event, my first priority are my clients that are within the, the immediate vicinity so that they get to be a part of it, you know, and, and, and headline it, 
if well, you will, along with the other headliners. They can't afford to fly people in, you know, all these events. That, that, you know, they, they can barely afford to make sure that all of their own people and their own staff can get there. They can't be flying people in. So if you can find somebody locally, that just makes more sense for everybody. Oh, well, sure, yeah, and, uh, and by no means am I mommy Warbucks because I, you know, I'm a hardworking person. I've worked my ass off for you. Oop, I don't know if I can say that. I worked my butt off for many, many years, you know, but I, I'm not I'm not loaded, you know, but um, I do the best I can. Yeah, just be careful. This isn't blog talk radio, lady. We have, yeah, I'm sorry. We have FCC standards. <laughs> no, I'm sure that's fine. Uh, but, uh, and believe me, I've said worse. Okay, good. Let, let's not let management know that, but. <laughs> no, but you know, I mean, it's just not something that is completely um, um, open for discussion. You know, I mean, I may say, okay, well, I've got this budget, and I'm working with the person who owns the location. Okay, and you got to completely calculate everything, and then you look at what you have left, and you're like, geez, you know, mm-hmm. now what? You know, and there's a, who, how am I going to get anybody there? You know, but, I mean, that's why I have a sponsor, and I get a lot of help from that as well, you know, which is fantastic. And uh, But, you know, a lot of people don't agree with my sponsor, you know, and they won't. <laughs> it's an energy drink, and it's called cocaine energy drink. And, yeah, I can um, see that might be an issue. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, what? It's, it doesn't have cocaine in it, and it's so funny because they have their little um, – a little disclosure on the side, and they go, anybody who thinks this actually has co- cocaine in it is an idiot. <laughs> you should say you must be high. That would be better. I know, right? That would have been funnier. But, you know, that would be the like, brownies you, know, you eat with it. It's a fantastic product, and actually one of the owners of it is, a, is an old, old, old friend of mine. I've known him for over 20 years, and he happens to be the uh, former drummer of Fear Factory. And... um he has, he's got his hands in everything. Like, you know, he's just, he's done so well for himself. I mean, I knew him when he was a senior in high school. That's how funny it is and how long ago, you know. So um, it, it's a big hit, you know. I would say 95% of the people who see me with the product or, or if I have it in an event, it just, it, I, I sell out immediately. Like, it, it, they're just gone. You know, but then you have a couple of people who are like, oh, can I take a picture with you holding the camera? Like, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, and now that they just got a really good plug on Spooky South Coast, I'll give you our address if they want to send us a case. I'm very good. <laughs> you do that. Uh, yeah. but, no, in all seriousness, though, you're right, though. To, to be able to have somebody that can help you offset some of the costs like that, you, you know, that helps immensely. Uh, but at the same time, it's not like, you know, it's not like you're dealing with uh, Anheuser-Busch and, and they can, you know, fully – finance, whatever it is that you want to do. They're able to give you whatever they can give you, and you have to make that work. Yeah. Yeah, and it's not easy. I mean, people think this is a walk in the park, what I do, and it's definitely not. And well, I have to deal with all these different personalities, which which is also what we were talking about earlier. You were um, going to ask me how to pick my my client. Right, because that's a question that I think is, is – uh, key to a lot of people that, you know, they, they just look at it as you're a paranormal talent agent and I'm in the paranormal and I need an agent, so why won't you represent me? Well, um, as I mentioned earlier on, you know, um, if you're not, if, you, if you're just the same as the next guy, why, why? Mm-hmm. So why would I waste my time? You know, because no one's going to book you. So but, you have to be an asset to me. Are, are you I'm with- not... Huh? I was going to say, are you willing to have that conversation with them, though, to say, you know, you may be presenting yourself to, to me, to, to Lara, as, uh, I'm sorry, as Lara, as saying, I'm totally going to butcher her name through the whole show, <laughs> which it's so easy. There's only four letters, but leave it to me to screw it up. Uh, you can say to them, you know, you're presenting yourself to me as a person who speaks about this, but can you work with them to kind of develop and to see what else they may have to offer? Because I'm sure you get some clients who are – great public speakers and just have limited material and there's something to work with there well if i see that there's any kind of possibility (laughs) that that they could be something exciting then like now i have champagne so from walk in the darkness on gtn she is actually my west or i'm sorry my uh east coast uh, event coordinator and also an agent with me, and she brought on a team that 
you know, is fairly new. Okay. And she's like, I know it. I know it. They're going to be amazing. And I said, okay, well, if you believe in them, I'm like, then they're your baby. Go for it. And so we signed them and they had been absolutely just kicking butt and taking names. They're getting themselves out there. And that's one of the things I say to people <laughs> when I bring them on, I say, I won't, I won't keep you on my roster if you don't work as hard as I do for you. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because basically as it sits, until you get booked for an event and you're getting paid as an, for an, with an appearance fee, I'm working for free. And this is not something that I want to do. <laughs> okay? I mean, <clears throat> I'm not in it, obviously, to get rich, but I'm not in it to work for free either. And that's just keeping it real. Okay? And um, I said, so, you know, that's one of the ways I do pick my people. And it, it's I will, I will research them first. And if I see that they're busting their butts every day and getting out there and going to events and <laughs> excuse me, and going on investigations and putting up their evidence and people are responding to it, then they're worth hooking on, you know, like sure. putting that fishing line out and give them a shot, you know. And so that's how I, I pretty much, you know, bring them on. That's how I, that's how I investigate, investigate it for myself. And I'm sure, too, that uh, you expect them to have a level of commitment to themselves and to their own brand. They can't just leave it up to you to say, all right, well, you know, you have a social media team, albeit a small one, but you have people who do that for you and work with you on that. So, therefore, you should be handling all that stuff for me, and I don't have to have that presence. And really, why would you ever want to trust somebody to handle your image completely like that? Why wouldn't you not want to be an active participant in it? But I'm sure you get some people that that don't, that don't want to put in that same level of effort. Well, that's one thing that makes me one of the luckiest girls out there, in my opinion, is because every one of my um, clients, you know, I've made it very clear that this, this community, the paranormal community in a whole, is not very big. Even though we're talking about millions of people, the truth be told, it's still a very small community. we got a lot of clicks. Mm-hmm. You know? And so it's up to us as a team, as a family, and I do treat them all as family, <clears throat> to help everybody within this family. So aside from my social media people, when, when I have my clients in there and there's an event coming up that they're going to be at, you know, like, for instance, this weekend's at the Iowa Paracon. I ask everybody to share it and, and let everybody know, you know, oh, you know, Chris Edman and Chris Booth are going to be there. You know, this is going to be an awesome event. Go see our resurrection people, you know. And so that's what they do. So, you know, it, it, it's such a family effort, you know, within my business. And I've become, I've come to realize that I've got, I've, I'm very lucky. In that aspect. Right. And and you, mm-hmm. you're never going to be able to get everybody to work together. And I, I don't want to go off on this uh, anti power unity rant that I go off on <laughs> every once in a while, but <laughs> it, it's not going to happen. And people are kind of just wasting their efforts uh, trying to get everybody to, to all get along and, and sing Kumbaya. But when you've built a stable of talent, you know, it's it's key for them to all get along. Uh, because yeah. for one thing, you're going to be trying to book them at a lot of things at the same time, I would assume. And, you know, you're going to want to have your own events where you bring them all on board. So, you know, <laughs> in, in terms of that, it's 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 key to have them get along. But, you know, not everybody has to like everybody in the field. And I think that's another thing that people have a misconception about about what you can do is they think that you're going to be uh, an image rehabber, that you're going to be their image consultant. You're going to create this falsified version of themselves, this public face of themselves uh, that they can put out there and they can hide all their warts and that's not going to work, not in this field. No. And, and let me just let me just go ahead and be very clear. I've had several clients that didn't get along with other clients and my, my response to them is um, I cannot and will not allow you to dictate who I bring on as my clients. This is not your business. It's mine. And I give them the opportunity to, to walk, to walk, 
if that's the case because I if I feel that me bringing someone on is a good move for me, but in but they're having a fit about it, that's not my problem. And I've had clients tell me I don't like that person, and I'm asking you now, please do not book me at the same events as them. And I'm like, not a problem. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you don't want to put people in a position where they're not going to feel comfortable. Uh, mm-hmm. But at the same time, you don't want to be, as you said, you don't want to have them dictate how things are going to go either. Um, we're coming up on, on the break here, uh, and we're going to have to take a, a short break for the news. And then when we come back, we're, we would want to bring on Eric Altman, who is uh, he's a radio host. He hosts Beyond the Edge Radio, and he's also a Bigfoot researcher in Pennsylvania. And he is somebody who has become quite a recognized figure in that field. And he is somebody who has been actively seeking representation uh, for quite a while. So we want to bring him on, if it's okay with you, Laura, and we want to talk to him about what it is that he's looking for to kind of get an idea of the other side of things. Because it's easy to have you come on and to have you discuss what it is that you can offer. But we need to get the other side of that, I think, where we can see what people are looking for. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and so if that's okay with you, we'll bring him on and we'll have a little bit of crosstalk and uh, – We'll get into the to the real meat and potatoes of this. And I also want to talk to you, too, uh, in the next hour about when you're dealing with these people uh, and when you are first feeling them out, uh, some of the process that you have to go through in vetting them out. Uh, and if it's a matter of uh, just how much background you must have to do on them. Uh, it's, I mean, it's easy if somebody says, oh, well, I want to come on. I want you to book me for public speaking gigs. And you and they send you a YouTube link to one of the local appearances that they've made and you check it out and you say okay here's somebody who has a problem with public speaking and and can't handle it but it it must be a lot more to the job than that of actually really researching and seeing if they haven't already burned bridges and already set themselves up as being uh, one of these figures that could cause problems for you down the line so we'll talk about that coming up in the next hour but why don't you let everybody know before we take a break uh, about how they can get in touch with you with both Resurrection Talent and with your radio show Absolutely. They can uh, check me out and check out my website at resurrectiontalentllc.com. There's a contact link there, and you can email me anytime, or you can find me on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Laura, L-A-R-A dot Calhoun, C-A-L-H-O-U-N. And um, I just, I pretty much just uh, advertise for Resurrection Radio on there and the um, our fan page at Resurrection Talent LLC uh, fan page on Facebook as well. And if you go to SpookySouthCoast.com, it's all linked up right there on the front page of our site. You'll see a picture of Laura, and you can click on that and go right to her bio and uh, all the links to all of her websites, including uh, Art to the Bone Tattoos, which is uh, some phenomenal <laughs> work there, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so you can check that out as well during the break. Uh, also, during the break, if you want, you can go to legendtrips.com while we're discussing the idea of having some of these paranormal events. We do have our upcoming USS Salem investigation in Quincy, Mass. Tickets are available for that. I got big news for that. We're going to be able to sleep on the ship. We've yes. worked it out. Yes. They said we just had to have 10 people that were interested in sleeping on the ship so that they could have make it worth their while to have staff there overnight. And already the response has been overwhelming. So we, we will be able to offer bunks on the ship for $30 a person. Uh, so that's not bad. That's, you get a cup of coffee cool. in the morning, you get a bed for the night, and you get to sleep on a heavy class cruiser. So can't go wrong with that. Plus, at 2 a.m., you don't have to go anywhere. You can just lay down and go to sleep uh, when the event is over. So go to legendtrips.com if you want to get your ticket for that. They're just $99 for the ticket, and then we'll have it. you'll book through the ship to get your bunk for an extra $30 uh, a little bit later on. And we also have been planning some events for the fall. Let's keep September 28th open. Let's keep October 12th open. Let's keep November 9th open. And I uh, can't really give too much away about that yet because we're still finalizing some things. But uh, we have an event slated for September 28th, a return trip. Uh, we were victorious in securing another location for November 9th. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm fearing that October 12th is going to be a, a, another good event, too. So <laughs> stay tuned for all that. All right, we're going to take a break for the news. When we come back, we'll talk more with Lara Calhoun. We'll take your calls. More on Spooky South Coast in just a bit. Coast turns to for local news, talk, weather, and sports. WBSM New Bedford, AM 1420, WBSM. 
From ABC News, I'm Chuck Severson. Firefighters are winning in the mountains near Palm Springs, California, where 6,000 people are evacuated. We really made some good progress so that we can actually say that we are at 49% containment. That's up from 25% earlier today on that wildfire has been surging in three directions, threatening several communities, including Idlewild and Pine Cove. There have been a total of seven residents destroyed and five commercial properties. The cause of the Southern California fire is under investigation. It's a week after the George Zimmerman acquittal, and protests haven't let up. Rallies in more than 100 cities today, including in Atlanta. In downtown Cincinnati, hundreds booed when reminded of a local prosecutor who said he would not have charged George Zimmerman in the first place. Bishop Bobby Hilton told the crowd, without justice, there will be no peace. It's time for this to stop. The evidence is solid, it's verified, it will not continue. Other speakers at the rally decried black-on-black -black violence and urged a peaceful resistance to injustice. Bill Reinhardt, ABC News, Cincinnati. Using the verdict to talk about race is great, says Zimmerman attorney Mark O'Mara, but... If we're going to use this as impetus to have a conversation, then that's great. If we're going to use this as a basis to distrust the system, then we sorely miss the point of a fair, open, and consistent verdict. Car bombings and other explosions in Baghdad have killed 22 people today, injuring another 186. Uh, totaling what Iraqi officials have said, more than 250 have died in bombings in Iraq the past 10 days since the Muslim holy month of Ramadan started. Two people injured in the Aurora, Colorado movie theater massacre a year ago today mark the anniversary by getting married. Eugene Han and Kirsten Davis say they want to turn July 20th into a celebration. Twelve people were killed, 70, other, 70 others injured in the shooting. You're listening to ABC News. For a fast, accurate temperature reading, nothing beats the Exergen Temporal Scanner Thermometer. Here's what a real Exergen customer had to say. This works great. My doctor's office uses the same brand and recommended this one to me. I love that I can check my baby's temperature when sleeping because he stays asleep. The Exergen Temporal Scanner Thermometer is backed by over 50 published medical studies, more than any other thermometer, and is used and recommended by more medical professionals everywhere, giving you the peace of mind that you're getting the best. The Exergen Temporal Scanner Thermometer. The Home Depot has kiddo worry-free smoke and carbon monoxide alarms from just $24.97. A lithium battery keeps them working for 10 years so you never have to change batteries. With each smoke alarm designed for a specific room and the longest lasting carbon monoxide alarm on the market, you can replace your older alarms today with kiddo worry-free alarms starting at $24.97. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. U.S. only see store details. The Brazilian government says Vice President Biden's telephone Brazilian President Dilma Rousseff to ease tensions from the disclosure that the U.S. collected data on billions of telephone and email conversations in Brazil. Of eight women injured, two are critical after witnesses tell fight broke out amongst a group of women as they came out of the nightclub studio 98 in Philadelphia early this morning. One allegedly got into her SUV, says this eyewitness. I don't know what's going through her mind, and then she just plowed the parking lot, like, just drove through. No search for anybody else's life or even her own life. Crashing into the crowd of people. It just was a huge commotion. Everybody talking about shooting each other, fighting. I mean, it, it was it was just it was all a women thing over another man. He's a security guard at the Philadelphia nightclub. A list that meant the difference between life and death is being auctioned. Oscar Schindler's 14-page typewritten list saved the lives of 1,100 Jews who worked in his factories from Nazi gas chambers. It's just one of four existing copies and the only original to be sold publicly. It will be auctioned on eBay. It comes with a signed affidavit from Itzhak Stern's nephew. Stern, played by Ben Kingsley in the movie, was Schindler's accountant and typed out the name. The list is life. The starting bid, $3 million. Daniela Bellotta, ABC News. This is ABC News. Homeowners, in today's world, no neighborhood is immune from burglaries. Get a state-of-the-art monitored home security system for Protect Your Home, your authorized ADT dealer, and get peace of mind today. Call right now, 1-888-213-2244, 1-888-213-2244. Local permit fees may be required. License number CAACO 6320, KY City Louisville 483, and FLEC 1300-3427. Call for additional numbers. Call now, 1-888-213-2244. Chuck Severson, ABC News.
Out on the golf course, there are the obvious hazards. There's the pond, bunker, the rough, the even rougher. Yeah, put me down for an eight. The giant maples. The row of houses out of bounds on the right. The angry flock of geese who surrounded your ball. Even the occasional groundskeeper you had no clue was there. But if you think you found every possible hazard out there, think again. The hazard you missed could actually be a killer. It's the spot on your skin, the one that could be skin cancer. Fact is, if you're a man over 50, you're in a group most likely to develop skin cancer, including melanoma, the kind that kills one person every hour. One in five Americans is likely to develop a form of skin cancer during their lifetime. That's why your best shot is to check for a spot. It's easy. Follow through and check your skin. It could be the save of a lifetime. Go to SpotSkinCancer.org to find out how. A message from the American Academy of Dermatology. This is Jack Peterson with the latest featured animals up for adoption at the Forever Paws Animal Shelter, 300 Linwood Street in Fall River. Tiffany is a beautiful, all-white, long-haired senior adult cat. Her calm and affectionate personality makes her a great companion. Her gorgeous green eyes will steal your heart. And if you're 55... Welcome to Health Talk, a program on health, medicine, and nutrition, featuring the latest information on both conventional and alternative therapies. Your host, Ronald Hoffman, M.D., is a graduate of the Albert Einstein College of Medicine. Your station for the South Coast, AM 1420, WBSM. financial is something that isn't supposed to happen. Hour number two of Spooky South Coast. Tim Weisberg here along with the science assassin Matt Costa and science advisor Matt Moniz. And we are having a fantastic discussion tonight with our guest, Laura Calhoun of Resurrection Talent. We were talking about whether or not there's a need for talent agents in the paranormal. That's what Laura does through her company, Resurrection Talent. She has a stable of great people that she represents. Uh, there's some of the well-known names in the field. We're talking with her about what that entails, what it means to be their agent, to be their representative, and uh, also about whether or not this is something that needs to happen. And we'll be joined by Eric Altman, who is uh, the host of Beyond the Edge Radio and a, a Bigfoot researcher uh, and, and you know one of the people that we lean on and trust in this field and uh, somebody whose opinion that we take uh, very highly. So we'll talk with him uh, as somebody who has been looking for representation and find out what it is that he is expecting from that type of service. Uh, but before we get into that, I do want to ask you, Lara, about uh, the, uh, how, how do I want to put this uh, nicely to some, <laughs> I, I don't want to really hurt anybody's feelings here, but let's face it, not everybody that does this uh, needs to be famous. Not everybody that does this should be famous. Not everybody that does this should be put in front of the public to represent this field. <laughs> so That's very true. And are you seeing, though, an increase of people who, obviously you're, you're not taking them on as clients if they don't have anything to offer, but are you seeing an increase in requests from people who really don't have anything to offer and just, just think that this is going to be their path to fame and fortune? Is that Can you kind of tell that that's what they're angling for when they contact you? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You know, I I made a post a couple of weeks ago or a week and a half ago or something like that. So some guy got really upset with me because I didn't get back to him like months and months and months ago. Um, and he said he had emailed me in many different ways in different places to contact me. And I had someone working for me 
um, that was controlling all of my all of my emails, you know, and watching all of the you know, you know resurrection stuff. And I never saw it. And come to find out, it was put into the archives and just ignored. And I apologize profusely, but, you know, there's just some people that they walk in and they, they're like, you know, well, I'm the best in my neighborhood. I <laughs> know yeah. um, I haven't been out of my neighborhood, but I'm the best in my neighborhood as far as paranormal investigations go. And I need an agent. Hmm. I'm like, you know. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, I was the best uh, football player in my neighborhood growing up, but that didn't mean that I was good enough to make the high school team, you know? Exactly. Not that I tried, but I'm just using that as an example. And, mm-hmm. and that's the thing now is, like, we've reached the point now in, in the paranormal field and in this current bubble of interest in the paranormal that just being an investigator isn't enough anymore. Just going out and capturing an EVP or having an experience, it's just not enough anymore. The story is no longer unique. It was unique 10 years ago. Now it's not. Now you're just like thousands of other people that have the same hobby. And you need to have more than that to have something to offer. Yeah, you got to have like really cool t-shirts and a hearse or something. And goatees. And goatees. Says the guy with the goatee. (laughs) And look look tough. That's just because I have a double chin though. That's why I have a goatee. It's not because I'm in the paranormal. Yeah, you have to cross your arms and lean up against the dusty brick wall. <laughs> exactly. Well, you know, it, it, the thing is, is like Rosalind Bound is a very excellent um, example of someone who uh, <clears throat> has earned her place. You know, what I mean, it, in a sense, I mean, because you know, I've heard of a lot of well, these people want to be famous. They haven't even earned their way, and I'm like, whoa. Why do they have to earn their way if they've got something cool going on right now? <laughs> you know, it's like, calm down, you know. But, like, Rosalind Brown, that woman spends her own money, utilizes, utilizes her own time, and goes to events all over the country. Well, you know what I mean? And, and, and that, with everything that she does, you know, she goes on these investigations, she helps people. She, you know, um, gets her name out there on her own. She truly doesn't need representation except for the fact that by having representation, she's got an agent who's going to take care of all her bookings and handle all her reservations, make sure that the contracts are taken care of, that they're going to pay her, they're going to have her ticket, you know, like her, her airfare. You know, they, they, everything's in line. Everything's taken care of. You know, um, um, advertisements are in place. You know, and that's also what we do. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, the, we don't just book people. Right. <laughs> There's a much deeper, you know, spectrum of what we do. You know, so even though it seems like someone like her, or the Booth Brothers, they can handle their own stuff. But you know what? We take care of all the stuff that they don't need to be bothered exactly, with. Exactly, yeah. they have busy, busy lives. Alle- alleviate the, the schedule for them a bit so they can focus, for example, with the Booths on making a film instead of having to worry about getting out there and promoting themselves and the film. Exactly. Right, well, let's bring in Eric Altman to the discussion. Uh, good evening, Eric. Thank you for joining us. And uh, we, we originally were going to have this topic on a few weeks ago, but you know the Red Sox decided to play <laughs> during our time slot and oh. change things around. But we we were talking back then, Eric, about having you come on because you are somebody that has been looking for representation. And I want to ask you: We know uh, of your accomplishments and what it is that you do, but what is it that you're looking for in representation? First of all, good evening, Tim, and, and everybody um, in the studio. Thanks for having me back on. I appreciate it. Hey, anytime. Um, what I'm looking for isn't so much as um, the fame or the fortune aspect of things, because, I mean, fame to me is an important. Uh, I've been doing this for 17 years in the field active, mm-hmm. studying the, the subject for 33 years. I could care less if I'm famous or not. I do it for the love of doing it. So I wanted to get representation, um, as Laura had mentioned, to get help with the bookings and to get help with um, getting my expenses taken care of and having someone that could um, help me with contracts and that sort of thing. I do a lot of my own booking, and I've spoken since 2000 
all across the United States, and I've been at some pretty big events. And, and as you know, cryptozoology is really taking off now. Uh, it's becoming very, very popular. And, of course, I'm getting contacted by a lot of folks to come speak at events, which I'm very happy to do. However, it's hard to keep track of everything and the bulk events and to set up airline tickets and all that. So I was trying a few years ago to find good representation uh, to help me take care of that aspect of things. Not, not for the fame or fortune, because I don't ask to be paid to speak at events. I just like to have my expenses covered. Yeah, and that's that's one of the uh, the key things of having representation like, like yourself, Laura, is that you can be that buffer between, mm -hmm. I'll use the term talent, between the talent and the people putting on the event. You can be the person that can argue for them and get them the best deal and get the things that they want done. Uh, you know, right down to the brandy glass full of brown M and M's, if need be. But you're you're the person that can be that intermediary between the two, which helps the talent save a little face and helps the event coordinator save a little face as well. Absolutely, and that's where that's where my passion comes in because by trade, my my business outside of my tattoo business is I do collections. So I negotiate like a crazy lady. I can do that. That's what I love, you know, and, and to keep things, things organized. <laughs> and so when that kind of thing comes down for me, like when I get into the position where I'm negotiating for my clients to get them the best deal possible, you know, that's where it becomes fun and exciting for me because I love what I do. I don't know what that was. You playing music? I don't know what that was. Something just went off on its own. <laughs> a little creepy here in the uh, spooky studio, but uh, well, Erica, I mean, I'm sure that's part of of what you need too. But at the same time, it must be frustrating to you that you're someone who, and I know that you would never say this about yourself, so I'm going to say it. You're one of the most recognizable names in the cryptozoology field. You are one of the most respected researchers in that field today, and you're probably hitting a brick wall with some of these people because they're like, I don't know who you are, Eric. Because you're dealing with people whose primary focus is they're, they're dealing with ghosts and, you know, they're watching the, the ghost TV shows so they don't know the whole cryptozoology aspect. So your name isn't as familiar to them. And you need somebody that can kind of be your champion in that regard because you don't want to be spending time telling people about who you are, right? Well, that, that is true to a point, yeah. Um, that's, that's the frustrating aspect of it because... And I, I really appreciate the kind words. Thank you very much for that. Oh, they're well um, earned. Thank you. Um, I, I've been, like I said, I've been doing this a long time, and I, I've, I have accomplishments. And you know, I, I've done the field research. I'm in the process of writing a book, and you know, I've spoken at a, a, a plethora of um, events, from paranormal events to UFO conferences to cryptozoology conferences to, to Bigfoot conferences. Mm -hmm. And I'm very well received. I get praise for my lectures. Um, and I'm not trying to brag about it, but I, I always get positive feedback. But when it comes to some of these big events, unless I've gotten the chance to speak at an event that somebody's been at, uh, like we'll, we'll use phenomenology, for example. I've spoken there four years in a row, and Dana and Chris Wainer that run the event are phenomenal. I showed up one year just as a guest and got to know everybody a little bit and you know, put my name out there and worked hard. To, to say, hey, I'm available if you need somebody to talk on cryptids. And they had me come in the second year, and, and we built a great relationship. But I had to do all that legwork yeah, on you, my you own. Had to, to you had to break that ice, yeah. Right. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm sure, though, too, that because uh, I know a lot of the people that run these bigger events. AM 1420 oh. on air. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's just going crazy tonight. <laughs> well, we're having, really, we're having some really bad lightning here. Um, and, like, you can actually feel the electrical charge in the air, so I'm sure that that's causing some havoc here with the equipment. I thought it was just me. No, no. <laughs> unfor unfortunately, uh, we're, we're our curse on to ourselves. So you don't have to worry about it, you being the problem. It's always us. But, uh, I thought it was me. <laughs> it, it's just a combination of all of us, I guess. The spooky stew tonight. Uh, but, Eric, uh, we're dealing though, with people that a lot of the people who are in charge of putting together some of these events, to them, cryptozoology is Lauren Coleman. And right. when they try to get Lauren Coleman, they can't because he's busy, and so therefore they don't have a Bigfoot guest. You know, they don't have somebody that can speak upon, uh, on that subject. So uh, it, it's really, when you're in a niche within a niche, you have to be your own champion. 
That's the only way that you can get it done, or you have to get somebody who can represent you and take care of it for you. Right, and that's why I decided uh, a few years ago to start looking into getting some kind of representation so that I could continue to book uh, events and, and go to these uh, these lectures and, and speak. And and I've been pretty successful on my own. Uh, I have, I've had 13 speaking engagements this year alone, and every year I keep adding a little more, but it, it's a lot of work on my end um, to, to get these bookings and to make sure that um, um, my expenses are covered, to make sure that I'm going to have a hotel room when I go to speak. Because for the last 13, 14 years that I've spoken, I've paid for mo- almost everything out of my own pocket, my own expenses, my own uh, travel, my meals, you know, this, and everything to get to these events, even some events I've gone to and paid for my own ticket. And, and yeah, it's, I can understand how to do that because a lot of these conferences don't make a lot of money. But in the same aspect, I'm coming in as a speaker for them, drawing in people, and I'm not getting anything in return. So if I could just get my expenses taken care of, plus you know, continue to get help with these bookings, that would be tremendously appreciated. It would take a lot of the burden off of me to try to, to get that done. And, and that's Sorry, exactly what, what I tell my clients. Like When I was taking on both exclusive and non-exclusive, um, Eric, I was, you know, I had so many clients that were just booking themselves. I'm like, why do you have me? I said, are they paying your way? Are they hooking you up with lodging? No, no. Well, then that's my job. Why did you do that? Right. You know, so like, you know, and my clients now, if they have people approach them, I have them get the contact information, shoot it over to me, and I take over from there. I do not negotiate on your own because you will not get the best deal because they're not you're not going to fight as hard for you as I am because I want to get paid too. Sure, and that you know, makes sense. That's that, the that's fact because exactly mo- most of what I do is free work because I'm constantly promoting. I spend money on my website. I make business cards. I make banners. I I make promo kits. I go to big events like Dead Winter. I made these awesome press kits that in, involved everything with resurrection talent. I spent hundreds and hundreds of dollars, you know, and it's paying off slowly but surely. Now you got to imagine I've always been doing this, you know, on my own with resurrection for a little over a year, you know, and it's been paying off beautifully. But that is the case, and that's what you need. You've been doing it long enough. You need to be getting something covered for sure. And- Oh, sorry. My biggest ahead, frustration, ahead. my biggest frustration right now is, as you brought up, Tim, um, I'm, I guess you could say I'm kind of recognized. I mean, some people know who I am, and I'm, I've been invited to speak at, at some of these big events like Parafest that's coming up, Phenomenology, uh, Phantom Con, Mid South. I'm going to be there in uh, in actually two weeks. Um, but the frustration is, I've reached out to many, many organizations and never heard anything back from anyone. Not even an email saying, oh, thank you for your interest. Uh, we're not looking for new clients at this time, or you don't meet our criteria. I haven't heard anything from anybody. And I've been trying now for over, gosh, a year and a half to try to seek uh, representation, and no one's gotten back to me. Maybe my reputation isn't what uh, they're looking for, but a, an email back or something would be appreciated. Maybe the topic isn't what they're looking for. Well, maybe it's a harder right sell. Zoology is about to burst because, you know, um, I've, like I said, I have producer friends out here in LA who deal with paranormal shows and they're not messing with them anymore because it's, it's, a, it's a dying situation right now. And it's like paranormal's out and crypto is in. <laughs> that's, what they're, that's what they're looking for right now. Yeah. And, and you're right, Laura. It is, it is on the cusp of becoming. Huge, just like Paranormal was back in 2006, 2007, before it really burst on the scene with Ghost Hunters. And, and it's about to do that with cryptozoology. We've got Finding Bigfoot, we've got Mountain Monsters, we've got all these documentaries that are coming out, and it's really catching on. And I, I put on a couple events for about eight years myself. I've, I've hosted and conducted events, and I see the turnout every year growing and growing. So I know there's an interest there, but it's the fact that so many of these um, talent agencies are mindset on just paranormal. They won't look at UFO researchers. They won't look at Thank you. researchers for some reason. Well, and you know, what's funny, Eric, is uh, should you happen to 
be in touch with producers from one of these shows and get on one of these shows and and uh, even become perhaps a regular cast member. All of a sudden, all these talent agencies that you contacted are suddenly going to be like, wait a minute, Altman, Altman, let me go back through my emails. <laughs> and you'll start getting all kinds of responses. And that yeah. won't respond. And that's, that's the problem. It's a little bit, it's, it's kind of a little bit backwards. Uh, yeah. You know, a lot of these, and I'm not saying that you do this, Laura, but a lot of these people who are representing others, it's a backward situation. You have to get on television in order for them to want to work with you. But, you know, the way that it, would work normally is you should have that reputation before television comes knocking instead of just having a unique angle but they're looking for the angle and that's the sad part because I mean again like for yourself Eric I know that this is a major passion for you you just said that you're not trying to get famous you're not trying to get on TV but the likelihood is is someone with with your talent and your passion you know especially if you bring on an agent who's got contacts especially, and being in the field that you're in, there's going to be offers that that are going to be insane for you. You're going to be for, like, television and stuff like that. You know, because it's just like Ken Gerhardt. You know, he's on a lot of shows, and there he's and it's building up. He's getting more and more because there's, like, the, um, what do you call it, the ancient aliens and stuff like that. They, you know, they, they're on all these shows. And... Um, there's going to come a point where, especially if you get an agent, and like for myself, I have producers and directors and talent agents, uh, you know, like casting directors, going to my my website, and they call me or they email me, and they're like, oh, we were interested in this, or we're working on a show, and we want to work with some of your people, or who do you know? And and that's what makes so that that makes my job fun because now I'm a part of creating something incredible. And you bet your butt, if it's about Chris's zoology, I'm going to throw my ta- my talent's name and say he's awesome, let's do this, here. You know, get, get in touch with this guy. He won't let you down. You know, because I don't bring on people who don't know what they're – You, if some guy goes, oh, I'm a ghost hunter and I need an agent, well, what do you know about ghosts and the equipment and all that fun stuff and they don't know anything? I'm like, seriously. <laughs> you know, it's just like stop, mm. you know. But you have the 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 um, time and effort and energy behind you, the blood, sweat, and tears. Yeah, and and I've been contacted by producers to be on television shows and, and to appear on different things. And I've turned them down simply because it wasn't something that I was interested in. Um, so that opportunity is there, but. Uh, I'm not about becoming famous and not about making the money. I really don't care if I'm on TV or not. That's not a big deal to me. I just want to get out there and speak. I love to, to speak to people. I love to educate people and to teach them what this field is about, what Bigfoot is about, what cryptids are about. I, I, it's such a passion for me to, to be able to share my knowledge with other people. And I feel I'm so limited um, by booking myself these events that I'm not getting my name out there to attend other events to speak at. And that's what, that's what a lot of the frustration lies, I think. Yeah, but, you know, so, you know, inadvertently, you could all of a sudden be uh, the, the household name that people are looking for. Like, let's just say you did a segment for a show and somebody that's important, that it was a television production company or whatever, sees you and they're like, we want to build a show around you. I mean, would you walk away from that? Would you say no thank you? Um, it depends on what the show is about, and it depends on what the producers wanted me to do as far as um, my integrity or uh, what evidence is produced. I've turned down a show because of that. I was told, you know, you've got to produce sightings every week, and you've got to investigate sightings every week, and that's not how it works. Well, you, mean you, you, don't, you don't have Bigfoot on your speed dial? No, I don't. I wish I did. <laughs> You know, and I, I, I respect that. that, and that's wonderful, Eric. And that that I admire that a lot because a lot of people, or well, I shouldn't say a lot of people, but unfortunately, um, at least in the paranormal field, from what I've seen, a lot of people would just they'll sell their their eldest daughter to get on TV, and I just don't understand it. Well, you know, it's not about the television for me. It's about educating people and sharing the passion I love so much with others, and. Uh, as I said, I've turned down shows when I've been asked to um, not write out fake things, but, oh, we'll come up with something for next week's episode. Well, you 
can't guarantee a Bigfoot's going to be in that location. Or when they when they ask you to respond in a, a certain way, you know, right. it, instead of just responding naturally, like, well, can you play it up a little bit more? Yeah, exactly. And and as you guys know, as ghost hunters and UFO hunters and, and um, paranormal researchers, paranormal can't be called um, to do what you want it to do. It, it does it when it wants. There's no rhyme or reason. With cryptozoology, you can't call a Bigfoot out of the woods. You can't call Nessie out of the lake to come and appear on camera. You can't mm -hmm. go into the woods and point to the ground and say, oh, there's going to be a footprint right there. And the producers don't understand that. So, unfortunately, they want to um, keep viewers tuned in, and they want people to watch the show. So they've got to make it interesting and entertaining. And I won't compromise who I am, my integrity, or my research just to entertain people on television. Here, here. Now, of nice. course, if it was that easy, they wouldn't need people they with faces need like radio for us <laughs> because they, they could just put Star Search spoke models out there and be like, here, just call the ghost, it'll come to you. Call Bigfoot, it'll come to you. So there wouldn't be a need for people like us. So the fact that they, they come looking in our direction for this, we'll say, expertise, then mm -hmm. that shows that they should have a basic and inherent understanding that it doesn't happen that way, but of course it doesn't. And I'll just throw this out there, Eric. I mean, I'm not trying to toot my own horn here, but, you know, to quote Ron Burgundy, I'm kind of a big deal. People know this show. They know Spooky South Coast. You know, we've been called upon to do a lot of different, you know, major network TV shows. You know, pretty much any go show that's out there, we've done it. Whether it made it onto air or not, we've been involved with it. And just take a guess on how many of these uh, different conventions and different events I've been contacted about going and speaking at. Hmm. I would have to guess. Um, probably a very low number. A big fat zero. I've never been contacted once to ever go out and and take part in one of these events. Same. So if I really? wanted if I wanted to do it, I would have to be actively seeking out. And you know what? I'm uh, hey, if anybody wanted to offer, I'd listen. But I'm not real, uh, real keen on the idea of flying all over the country. I don't want to be, you know, somebody like like Jeff who has Jeff Belanger has to work every weekend throughout the entire year going all over the country. Uh, but you know, I would entertain the offers if they came in. But nobody's ever asked. And I'm fine with that. Sure, I can understand that. I, I, I make my own opportunities where I need to. Uh, but for some people, you know, that, that's just not enough. And for some people, they want to be a Jeff Belanger, a John Tenney. They want to be these guys who do this for a living and just go out there all the time. And some of them have something to offer and some of them don't. If anybody out there is listening, Eric does. So. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, well, well, what's surprising to me is um, the guys like Matt, yourself, uh, Chris, Balzano, that you guys aren't at these events speaking and lecturing. That just really stuns me because what you guys, I have the utmost respect for you guys. And Laura, you got to sign these guys right now. You got to get them under your, your roster and get them <laughs> out there in the public eye because these guys, I've been following their work for years and they enthrall me. They fascinate me with what they do. And these guys are some of the utmost standing guys in the field. So. Let me, let me just tell you that you're going to love this. It, I had to look up Spooky South Coast, okay? And when I realized who they were, and, you know, mind you, I, I've i been in the paranormal community, like, full force, full-fledged over the last mm, five years, and um, five going on six years. And when I saw it was these guys, I got so excited. I'm like, oh, that finally hit the big time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, and I, I think, too, Larry, you'd be well served. And I don't want you to think that we set this up for Eric to come on the show to try to introduce you to each other. But, you know, if you're ever looking to add another cryptozoology guy to your stable, Eric can be Actually, actually I, I only have one. And so, I mean, it would be an honor, but I would, you know, just put it out there, bro. I, brother, I would love a package deal. Let's bring all, bring all of you on. <laughs> well, we can't come as a package. That, that's, just, that's, that's just too much funny looking for one, for one deal. <laughs> and Eric's the best looking one out of us, so. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> you know what I mean. All right, well, we're going to take a break here. When we come back, uh, thank you, Eric, for joining us, and uh, we'll definitely we'll be in touch with you uh, soon. We'll have to have you come back on for a full show sometime soon. Hey, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. You have a great show. Keep rocking. I'll talk to you soon. You too. Take it easy. Bye-bye. See you, Eric. And uh, we do have to take a break, but if you have any calls, questions, concerns, thoughts, 508-996-0500, 1-877-996-1420. You can also jump into the chat room on SpookyTV at SpookySouthCoast.com. 
the pal talk chat, you know, it's kind of a mixed bag right now. A lot of people uh, aren't aren't for it. I'm liking it, but that's because it's the only chat room we've ever had that I can see. On it's crashed crash on me screen. three times. But that could be the computer, though. You're wor- you're working wirelessly, so that's no. It's telling me it's got server maintenance. I think we're having some issues here with the internet, uh, because uh, we've definitely been having some problems with the the feed, and hopefully the audio is better. I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, but you can put your questions in there if you can get it to work for you and not crash. You can also email us, crew at SpookySouthCoast.com, and you can always do it the old-fashioned way by calling in 508-996-0500, We'll be right back with more here on Spooky South Coast on WBSM. Helps if you put the button on. Don't look now, but Spooky South Coast is creeping up behind you right after this. It's a fact. You can make thousands of dollars flipping houses. Discover the secret house flipping formula from Dave and Pete, the stars of A&E's hit show Flipping Boston, for free. Hi, it's Pete and Dave. We're giving you our flipping formula for free. It's what we use to find the right house, flip it fast, and get paid. It's time to stop just talking about flipping houses and start doing it. Now is one of the best times in history. USA Today reported that you can make thousands of dollars in profit flipping houses. In New York City, the average profit was over 118 grand. Omaha, it's over 71 thousand bucks. Lake Havasu, Arizona, the profit per flip was $87,000. And we're going to show you how we do it for free. Stop dreaming. The houses are there. The opportunity will never be better. And for a limited time, the flipping formula is free. Call now, 800-229-6285 for your free flipping formula book and two DVD quick start guide. Just a processing. That's 800-229-6285. 800-229-6285. Some exclusions may apply. If you're an athlete of any kind and you know about joint pain, muscle pain, and even arthritis. Nearly half of all Americans suffer from some kind of pain due to chronic inflammation. Here's legendary golfer and Anata Block ambassador, Fred Couples. This is Fred Couples for Anata Block. It's been great for me and could be for you too. Anata Block is a breakthrough supplement scientifically proven to quickly and effectively reduce inflammation and get rid of your pain fast. For me, Anata Block has been phenomenal. I started taking Anata Block and within a few days, I simply started feeling better. Anata Block was an amazing find for me and I continue to feel better. Pick up your supply of Anata Block today by visiting your local GNC store or going to GNC.com. Anata Block is a GNC top selling product and five star rated. Even better, become a gold card member and get an instant 20% off. That's right, 20% off for becoming a gold card member. But hurry, this offer expires soon. So get a Netta block today at a GNC store near you or GNC.com. Uh, in-depth experience. And you're not just a casual listener to uh, the radio on week. Hi, Tom Bodette. It's never been easier to book a clean, comfortable room at Motel 6. You can book online at motel6.com, use our cool new app on your tablet or smartphone, or call 1-800-4-MOTEL-6 on your dumb phone. Sadly, you can't book by pigeon or morse code, so if you want the lowest price of any national chain by telegraph, I guess you're just dot, 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 dash, 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 dot, dash, dot, dot. I'm Tom Bodette for Motel 6, and we'll leave the light on for you. If you've got a pre-owned GM vehicle, you test drive it, right? And if your car is OnStar, why not test drive it, too? Just push the blue OnStar button and ask for three months on us. You'll get automatic help in a crash, turn-by-turn directions, roadside assistance, and monthly diagnostic checks, all at no cost and no obligation. Offer good on 2006 or newer digitally equipped GM models. Visit OnStar.com for coverage maps, details, and system limitations. It blew books off shelves from 20 feet away and scared the socks off some poor librarian. Turn on all your lights, lock the doors, and pull down the shades. Spooky South Coast is back. This looks extraordinarily bad. <laughs> all right, welcome back into Spooky South Coast. Tim Weisberg here along with the silent assassin, Matt Costa. Science advisor Matt Moniz and uh, Matt Costa, you you work here now? Is that the rumor? I, I do kind. Of, well, I don't know. I, I apparently have to fill out a stack of paperwork and then wait. I filled out like half. Wait one. six to eight weeks and then. <laughs> <laughs> not kidding about that part. Then perhaps uh, I'll well, uh, I'll be considered an employee. Congratulations. But I'll uh, I got my foot in the door. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And also now that you work here or will be working here. Yeah, they get some new bumpers into the computer. We will. We will. Stuck running the same two over and over <laughs> again. So, 
We need some fresh stuff. If only, do you still have the hard drive with everything on it, all those seven and a half years worth of stuff? Uh, I was on my old computer, which I still have the hard drive for, that I just have to gain access to again. Okay, well, we have plenty of people out there now in the Spooky South Coast audience that can help you with excellent, that. Excellent, excellent. So if somebody wants to help us out, you can get a hold of uh, Matt, Matt at SpookySouthCoast.com and tell him that you can help him at least pull all that information off and, and help him out with that because we need that stuff bad. Oh, yeah, definitely. We need it desperately. <laughs> We're stuck playing the same two bumpers all the time, and it gets old. It gets old hearing it, and I'm sure it gets old for the audience, too. We need all that great, fresh stuff. You you have so many. You probably made like 30 of them over the years. There's a good amount. There's, but um, yeah, we'll have to dig them out, load them up into the the yep. old uh, WBSM computer and fire them up. And speaking of the spooky South Coast team now, because we have a team, we have a webmaster now. We have a, a whole slew. A web mistress, I have to say. A mistress. Yes, well. web mistress <laughs> Summer Ronso. She is uh, helping us with some. So what's our safe word? Redesigning. It's uh, <laughs> WordPress. Because ah. w- whenever you scream WordPress, that's when she just gave away her password. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, whoops. It's, it's not WordPress 123, that's for sure. Uh, so the uh, Summer Ronso is on board. She's going to be helping us with uh, making the site a little bit better and making it more user-friendly. Uh, and Chris is taking over the article section, and we're, we're getting some great content up there uh, with all of our bloggers. So you can check those out. And uh, also we have uh, Christina Tufty, who is on board as our graphics gal who is going to be providing us with uh, promotional graphics each week to help promote the show on social media, which we want all of our friends and listeners out there to help us out with. And we also have, this is kind of breaking news, I haven't told you guys yet. I was contacted by an illustrator who is a fan of the show who wants to do some stuff each week uh, to help with some of the topics that we're doing. And I think that would work perfectly with the articles because a lot of times we're putting up these blog posts, we can't find photos that we can use yeah. <laughs> legally. So he can help us out with some designs that way. Of course, not to um, not to say that we don't appreciate the excellent work of the illustrator that's here oh with yeah. us. Definitely. I want to say hi to Jason Mayo, who is in here tonight. Uh, I know that you, you're behind the scenes tonight, and I know that you want to be behind the scenes, but I just want to acknowledge that you're here and say hello. And uh, so all kinds of exciting stuff happening so stay tuned to spookysouthcoast.com see that's what we have to do here Lyle. we're we're not like you we can't uh, uh assemble a team like the avengers that you have you know we have to kind of beg people can you help us out for free <laughs> and and so far it's worked we have people that have uh, been fooled by our our puppy dog guys and have agreed to help us out <laughs> so now somebody's coming to you uh with the prospect of uh, signing up and, and getting on board with you, and they want to know, they just basically want you to add themselves to your stable of clients. What is your process? You said that you uh, examine them and you see what it is that they have to offer. What do you actually do to do that? What do you go through uh, to vet these clients before you take them on? Well, um, yeah, but besides, like, checking out all their stuff that they send me. Like, I, I've got these uh, young fellas that just recently approached me when they want to get signed, and um, they have a plethora of videos and footage um, of investigations that they've done um, over the last year, and I went and I, I watched them all, and they're fantastic. And so, you know, anything that people send me to check out, you know, I'll check it out. And then after that, then I go and I really, I just, I do, I, I just pick apart their whatever social media pages that they have, if they have a website or whatever. And I do, I, I read all their stuff, you know, and seeing how they get along with people, how they, how they respond to questions. And, and then after that, I do, I, 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 I ask around, you know, and if they have people on their social media sites that are in common with me um, that I know they do a lot of correspondence with, uh, and they're my friend too, I will reach out and I will investigate that way as well. I'll ask about, you know, you know who they are, what they're about, you know, how do they get along with people. Are they hard workers? You know, are they serious about this? Do they fake evidence? Because the last thing I need is having one of my clients getting popped faking evidence because then all, 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 everything hits the fan. Right, and then yeah. every everybody that you represent would come under fire for that. Exactly, exactly. So it's, 
it's not a, it's not a um, exact science, but I I do I I kind of just try and do the way I do, you know. I mean, I did the same thing with my daughter's boyfriend. <laughs> kind of pretty much, you know. And it's just it's being a mom. It's being it, it is in a sense, you know, because I have to be careful who I bring around my people. Right. And now we've talked about some of the the things that you try to avoid like you know, causing drama and, and not having a good public speaking presence and, and things of that nature. But are there any other red flags that will turn you off to somebody? Like, you know, if there's somebody that has a lot of pictures of orbs on their website, is that something that you kind of look at it as a red flag? Or, or, or are you willing to kind of overlook some of that and, and go a little bit deeper? Yeah, I go a lot deeper. Um, there's the, what Support our troops. We Sorry about that. What? <laughs> that, that, that started off weird. Not only did the commercial fire off, but like a jet plane took off right next to us first. That was strange. Oh, Wowzers! Uh, you know, the, the, it's also about the person's integrity um, with themselves, their team if they have one, and how they they carry themselves um, with within the community. Um, you can you can pretty much count on me that I won't have any. Uh, any guys or girls that would would be considered, you know, um, promiscuous or have bad re reputation, um, been there, done that with a with an old client, and um, you mean there's people in this field that are actually getting some? Because I mean, we're all <laughs> spending our Friday and Saturday nights walking around in the dark. I thought we were just basically, you know, we're, I thought we were all basically, uh, <laughs> yeah, prepubescent folk here. <laughs> you're saying you're saying that there's people that have been getting down, and that's something that you have to kind of keep an eye on. Well, because I mean, listen, people's sexual um, activity is none of my business. But when they're going through through person through person through person through person, mm -hmm. only and then this is this is a fact, and this is something I have to deal with only to get ahead to get on TV. I'm not having that. Wait a minute. I don't want anything to do with it. I could have just done that. <laughs> I <laughs> saved myself a lot of time. <laughs> and it didn't work for that person. It didn't work? It did not. What a work for me. I'm incredible. It just created a horrible... I know you must be incredible. That's wonderful. <laughs> I was going to say, went right over <laughs> there and was like, snuck it in. It, 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 ruin, it ruined her repu this person's reputation. Sorry, I didn't mean to devolve the entire conversation there. Uh, you know, but that is something that it, it doesn't just happen in, in the paranormal. Obviously, that happens uh, in in all walks of life. People trying to take a shortcut, whether it be through that method or through other methods. Uh, and we always say there are no shortcuts, but the paranormal is something that you can find shortcuts. There are ways to get by. There are ways to get ahead faster than everybody else. I mean, it, it happens. If if you if you're good-looking people, and you form a, a paranormal team, there's a good chance you can get a TV show a lot faster than somebody that's been doing this for 15 years. and Or at least on one. Right. You know what I mean? Like, there's 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 ways to, to, to take advantage of uh, different aspects of things here uh, in the paranormal field because it's something that the media is paying so much attention to right now. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you look at the, at the, the large uh, uh, range of people within the community, um, most everyone are they have a family, children, husbands, wives, um, or on their way to uh, creating their own family, and uh, or have been married forever, and um, then you get this one person who is is a loosey goosey, and and it just throws a wrench into everything, and um, then they look bad. On, it looks bad on me. You know, I don't have control over these people. You know, I can tell them to knock it off, but if they do or not, it's on them. It has nothing to do with me. But if it starts to really take a, a toll on on my company's reputation, you got to go. So I just I, I just prefer you know not to get involved. And uh, Moniz and I have both individually dealt with that type of drama in the past of you know people who. Uh, let's just say that there's there's a, a a lot of suspicion that can take place in this field uh, oh, yeah. or another. You know, yeah. married couples are letting their spouse go off with you know members of the opposite sex on 
long weekends and coming home late at night and all that stuff. So there's a, a natural uh, inherent suspicion for a lot of what happens too. And some people play upon that. Some people prey upon that. And uh, that's that's definitely been the case. And A lot of false rumors too that absolutely. Start, start all kinds of things. Oh, yeah. Things. All it takes is for anybody to be friends and stuff comes up. And yeah. I mean, I don't know how much damage control that you get involved with uh, Laura, because you're going to have people who do get into a bit of hot water, and hopefully none of your clients have had that situation happen, but when there are negatives that pop up, you know, you, you'll find that you have to just spend all your time. As, you know, you mentioned the whole Aaron Houdini thing and not wanting to get involved with that. I just remember back to one of our first big controversies here on the show was the <coughs> Taps underwear incident, yeah. which, uh, yeah. you know, for those unfamiliar, there was a, a, a the Taps convention uh, down in Florida, right? And, and Taps on, yeah. And uh, there was a uh, seven. private party that took place, uh, yeah. and there was a pair of underwear that was tossed around as a joke. Well, it was, uh, I was there. I was one of the people in the pictures. I can tell you what happened. There was a band that was there playing, mm -hmm. and they had a bunch of their swag that they were handing out. And one of the items happened to be the band's logo on a pair of underwear, or several pairs. There were also T-shirts and several other things that they were uh, handing out. And one particular person was taking a picture of people wearing the band's underwear. They, but like on their heads and stuff. Yeah, right? on yeah. their heads and you know, it just over their clothes. Yeah, yeah. Go yeah, making goofy photos because it was swag. They did. They also did it with, you know, the T-shirts and all of the other things. It, but it was only the underwear pictures that were segregated out from a collection of photographs. We also were taking pictures of the fruit basket that was there and, you know, 50 million other things. But it was the underwear pictures that made the issue. Well, and the story became that everybody got hammered at a party and Kristen Gartland was taking pictures in her underwear. Yeah. And the scary part is the, all of the pictures taken at that party, w at least with the underwear, were done before anybody had to even cracked one beer. So... <laughs> Oh, boy. And even weirder about it, it was a private party. Yeah. Who was taking those pictures, and how did they leak out? It was on somebody's uh, social media site that somebody hacked to get access to to get the pictures. See, so it, it's all it takes is one little rumor like that, Laura, and you're dealing with a crap storm that was unexpected. Yeah, absolutely. And let me tell you, I was getting attacked, and my life was getting threatened during the whole Houdini thing. I had people threatening my life for having any involvement with him, and then I was then when I then when I released him from resurrection, I was getting phone calls for my and my life was getting threatened because I let him go. And basically, now see, I'm I'm originally from Houston, Texas. Okay, I've been in Los Angeles for about 25 years, and I am not one to be pushed around at all. And when it comes down to the nitty gritty, um, I, I just the gloves come off for me, and uh, I'm getting these quiet, these you know, blocked calls that are coming in. And finally, I was just like, okay, you know, I was like, whatever, you know, and hanging up on them. And then finally, I had enough. I was just up to my eyeballs with it. And I said, all right, I said, you want to, if you want to put your hands on me, I will give you my address. Let's do this. <laughs> and <laughs> they were like, oh, uh, never mind, and hang up. You know, and it's just like, I had enough. I was like, I, it, 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 you can only say, listen, you know, I'll find out who you are and I'll go sue you or I'll, I'll report you to the police. It just doesn't work. People don't care. Right. You know, and, and it, it was just out of control. And I finally had, I had, I had it up to, like, I was totally done with it. You know, and you want to kick my butt, you know, I said it in different words. I'm like, I will give you my address. You can come on over. And I said, but heads up. Just saying. <laughs> You'll be looking down the barrel of a 12-gauge Mossberg shotgun when you come in my house. Send me your yeah. pump. Huh? Send me your pump. <laughs> you want my pump? <laughs> no. The Mossberg. Is it semi-automatic or pump? Oh, it's semi. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it's just like, you know, um, I was like, do you want my pump? What? <laughs> It's called Lick My Love Pump. Oh. It's, no, it's a song. I can say that. It's a song title. <laughs> we can get away with it. Yes. And, and, you know, I don't get offended. I'm not, I'm not the type well, of person. It's, it's, it's not you we're worried about. It's station management here. 
Yeah, no, I'm all good. But, you know, it's like I, I just don't put up with drama. I don't put up with the BS, you know. And um, I've had my fair share of the, the haters out here, and especially in the, you know, Los Angeles area, so, you know, in Orange County and stuff like that I've had to deal with, and, you know, over the years. And finally, 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 you know, because I did not respond. And trust me, I was not innocent. Before I got involved with the paranormal like I am now, I was totally not innocent. I have a mouth on me. I, I will be the first one to admit it. But once I started getting involved professionally, I completely stopped getting involved. And I was still getting attacked for almost two years. And it finally, finally just came to a head, I guess, where they got bored with it. And, and they've gone away. And I think it's great. But, you know... It's a shame. It just really is a shame that people um, uh, let their egos stand in the way and uh, and create so much drama for people because this is such a loving field. If you, I mean, if you look at it for what it is and you get to talk to every single person or at least most of the people that are involved in this field, we're all in it for the same reason. We all love what we do, and we all have our own ideas, and that's all good and fine. And... If you if you give that person a chance, I bet you'd like all of them. Hmm. Well, I, I think we've only got a few minutes left here in the show, and uh, I, I think that if we've come to some sort of conclusion about whether or not people in the paranormal field need to have talent representation, I, I think the answer is some people do, some yes. people don't, and I think that it's you know that you'll find that those who want it will seek out your services and those who need it will seek out your services and those who don't will probably be against the idea and it's just kind of the, the the grain of salt that you have to take with all of it but it sounds to me like you're doing everything the right way it sounds to me like you're doing everything in, in a way that uh you, you know you're not trying to make celebrities out of people who are not celebrities you're just trying to help people get a little bit more recognition for their work and, and there's nothing wrong with that for sure Absolutely not. And if, if by just some chance that they get picked up for something incredible because of their personal talent and and um, expertise, and I happen to be their agent, then that's even better. You know, because I'm putting them out there. I'm getting them, you know, um, seen and getting them at events and doing what I've got to do. You know, and that is a pride thing for me that will make me so happy that, you know that that would be like that would be the biggest payoff for me is to see my people do something fantastic and also to see them completely satisfied whether they make it or not that's my that's the biggest payoff for me and it seems to me like you really do care about the people unlike those two power relations jerks that were just <laughs> in it for the money came in you know made a whole bunch of money doing it and then went away real quickly whatever happened to those guys <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, they they got back absorbed back to spooky South Coast like they were supposed to. So and said, hey, wait a minute, why are we promoting other people when we're really terrible at promoting ourselves? <laughs> you know, let's let, let's work on that a little bit more. Uh, so I want to thank you for coming on with us. And again, if if people uh, are looking for more paranormal in their lives, of course you can listen to Laura's show every Saturday night right before Spooky South Coast starts, and uh, they can listen to you uh, by getting to your website. Um, actually, it's, um, yeah, I actually have it on the links page, but if you just go to my Facebook, I promote it every week, and I also promote it on the fan page for Resurrection Talent, so um, it's just facebook.com forward slash Resurrection Talent LLC, so um, I'll have all the information on there every week. Excellent. They're all linked up right on the front page of SpookySouthCoast.com as well. Thank you so much for joining us, Laura, and we'll talk to you again real soon. It was a pleasure. You guys keep in touch, okay? Absolutely. You too. All right, honey. Take Thank care. you, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. That is Laura Calhoun of Resurrection Talent. We are just about out of time for this week's show. We'll be back next week. We're going to be talking about some Internet legends. So if you've encountered Slender Man, be prepared to call in and share your stories. And uh, maybe we'll have an encounter on our way home tonight. Keep those black-eyed kids away from me, too. And the only things that creep me out, those are the aliens. And Moniz, I know that you've been in touch with the aliens. I know that you've uh, told him about me. Yep. The, the best part was when he psychoanalyzed me at the Houghton Mansion. That was beautiful. Yeah, we don't talk about that anymore. Uh, but maybe we'll have to next week. Uh, we'll talk about a whole bunch of things uh, taking taking place next Saturday night. So uh, be sure to tune in. We'll be here at our regular time of 10 p.m. And if you missed any part of the show or any other show, check us out on YouTube. Check us out on iTunes. So many different ways to get the show. And, of course, SpookySouthCoast.com, the place to go all throughout the course of the week for paranormal content. 
Uh, so until next week, for Matt Moniz, for Matt Costa, for Chris Balzano, I'm Tim Weisberg, and we want you all to stay spooktacular. The station the South Coast turns to for local news, talk, weather, and sports. WBSM New Bedford, AM 1420.